here is the start of the 50th Sydney Hobart Classic. And back on Sydney Harbour, we're just a minute away from the start of the veterans, the over 30s, in this 1994 Kodak Gold Sydney Hobart. And there we saw at sale number 27, Winston Churchill, one of the original starters. Mark Mothersdill from the Ocean Racing Club of Australia, built in 1943. And Percy Coverdale, the original owner, had to seek official permission from Winston Churchill to name the boat in his honour of. Well, look at the fleet coming in here. All the older boats coming down to the start line now. The gun's ready. There it goes now. They're away now in the uh, veteran and vintage division. We've already got a spinnaker up there in the middle of the fleet, and uh, it could well be Cannon Mara, C and Kiernan's boat. But uh, HMAS Fremantle was our start boat, and the man on board uh, organising the start there was Trig Halverson. So uh, they're away now. The older boats, we'll see them move down amongst the fleet here. We've got Sir James Hardy's Nerida and uh, Utica, the oldest boat in the fleet and uh, they're lining up there now very nicely and Fidelis already is out in front. Yes, well that's uh, not surprising. She took line honours in 1966. She's been purchased by an Australian syndicate. After a 28 year absence, she's back sailing in the Sydney Hobart. Coming up now to the over 20 start. So these are the 20-year veterans, and in this fleet, some wonderful old boats. One of them being Love and War, Peter Kurtz's yacht. She won the race twice, and uh, a very, very competitive yacht. We can see we've got a bigger fleet this time around for this second start. And uh, the big towering uh, sail there in the middle of them all is Ondine 2, the uh, American catch. And uh, she's out here. She's uh, done the Hobart race quite a few times and uh, coming back to be part of this 50th Hobart race. So looking very good, close to the start now, getting into uh, about 1 minute 12 seconds to go. There's Hammer of Queensland with those blue sails on. One minute to go to the start, getting very close. We're on the maxi boat line. There's Tasmania there, and here's Exile, the pea green hull. And uh, she is uh, coming up for a very, very good start the way it's looking right now. Just luffing up into the breeze there, losing a bit of speed. Don't want to get too close to the line. Looks like they're going to go for the top end of the line. They're fighting. Oh, no, they're going to go right round and have another go at it. Um, loop around. They've dug themselves a bit of a hole here to get themselves into the starting area with a blue sail on the right of her was Freight Train, another one of the big old boats. C1 is Brinda Bella, looking very good where she's positioned. And there it is, we're away, the 50th anniversary Kodak Gold Sydney Hobart race and it looks like Tasmania starting at the top end of the line, a smaller yacht right in front of her and uh, Exiles uh, actually in doing their little loop have been a little conservative there. And look at that, Spinnaker and Spinnaker Stasel already up on Tasmania. And Longabata right behind her with the yellow and white Spinnaker. That's Congeri there with the big red ball in the middle of her Spinnaker. On the right of her is Sorcery. And uh, both well placed. And look at that massive sail in the background. The other two starting lines, really a spectacular scene. We can see the jibing uh, situation there now. Uh, and we've got uh, Tasmania's jibe. That's Broomstick there and uh, Epson Broomstick and uh, a 21.3 metre boat. Now, if Broomstick gets hard running conditions, downwind conditions, she will be very hard to beat to Hobart. We're now on board Kodak Express, and there's Animal Farm with the, the black spinnaker. Kodak Express, uh, well placed up towards the, the front of these bigger boats and around the middle of the fleet at the moment. Now here we come into the rounding mark, there it is, and Hammer of Queensland has got right of way, Spinnaker coming down, they've dropped the Spinnaker now, now they've got to get that out of the water or they'll go prawning and that'll slow them down something awful, but certainly Hammer of Queensland leading at the moment, now Brinda Bella will have to get her Spinnaker down shortly as well. So we've got a bit of a problem there, trying to get that Spinnaker down on Hammer of Queensland, They've got the inside running now. The spinnaker going up on the deck. There it is, coming down. They've got a bit of a mix up there with the headsail as well, but they've done extremely well to be where they are. Looks like they're going to jibe around the mark now. There they go, around the mark. Tasmania will be second, and Brenda Bella will be third. Now, Brenda Bella's in an absolute mess. You can just see on the left there, headsail half up, spinnaker half down, trying to get a little bit greedy around that mark. Now, Tasmania and Hammer of Queensland, you see the headsail hasn't come on on, on Brenda Bella's flapping there, and these other two yachts will go well. Tasmania did a beautiful job. Now, look at this, you've got yachts going from left to right and yachts from right to left. It is just a mess at the moment as they try to get around these marks and get out. Now, these are yachts going back that have missed the, uh, missed the mark, 
and trying to get back into the harbour and, and get around this market. Let's go down onto China Bear. Mr Graham, can you tell us what's been going on? Oh, Bob, it's been fairly exciting out here so far. <laughs> it's a little bit hectic there at the moment. Well, we've just got around the, the inner mark. We yeah. actually had to, uh, we missed it, we got squeezed out and we had to do a 360 go back around to find another hole. Uh, we managed to do that. Andrew Club has done a terrific job on the wheel here. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to... There are bullets touching there at the moment trying to get round this, Mark. We're watching collisions here everywhere, uh, right near where you are at the moment, going around the mark. We've got one yacht actually T-boning on the right of the screen. So there's plenty of uh, mayhem and carnage behind you there at the moment. Oh, Bob, it was exciting getting into it. We're just real pleased to get out of it. But there is Brenda Bella chasing Tasmania very hard as they're now beating south in this 1994 Kodak Gold anniversary. Soon after sunrise, the overnight developments in the 630 nautical mile classic were revealed. With the wind now coming from astern, the northwest, the line on his favourite, Bob Clifford's maxi-sized catch Tasmania, was able to cram on all possible sail and regain the ground she lost in the previous 12 hours. Tasmania was literally knifing her way towards the southern horizon and sailing away from the opposition. She was at that stage 200 nautical miles into the race and 36 nautical miles ahead of the record pace set by the American maxi Kealoa 19 years ago. Up ahead, though, a southerly buster would slow her run. The big question was, when would it arrive? George Snow's Sydney-based maxi Brinda Bella had surrendered the lead overnight. She was still making impressive speed, but needed stronger winds to make any impression on the front runner. The British-owned and Tasmanian-chartered Longabata Mitre 10 was holding down third place and managing to contain Arthur Bloor's fast-running pocket maxi Hammer of Queensland which in turn led the yacht most fancy to win on handicap, Exile, owned by Warwick Miller and representing Hong Kong. As our cameras reached Anthony Bealby's Epson broomstick, the complexion of the race was beginning to change. It was time to douse the spinnaker as the wind was moving towards the south. Sure enough, not far away, American Bevan Coppell had his Maxi Congeri already belting into the first phase of the southerly buster. And out in front, Tasmania told the complete story. The sleigh ride was over, the spinnakers were down, sail area was reduced, and it was a hard slog to windward for a short time at least. This was how the front runners were placed at the end of day two. A new complexion will come over the Kodak Gold Sydney Hobart Yacht Classic within the next 18 hours when gale force winds sweep across the fleet. The good news is that the wind will come from the west and northwest and drive the leaders at top speed towards a course record. The bad news is the same conditions will hammer the bulk of the fleet with 40 knot gusts and rough seas in Bass Strait and inevitably bring a spate of retirements. So far there have been very few retirements from the 370 yacht fleet. One of the latest was the Victorian entry Monia Topcat, sailed by Trevor Leesley. She lost her rudder when she struck a whale. Tonight, the Maxis, Tasmania and Brinda Bella are locked in a head-to-head -head battle in Mid-Bass Strait in the race for line honours. But on the existing forecast, any one of six yachts can be first to Hobart and beat the record time set by Kealoa back in 1975. To break the record and collect the $100,000 bonus being offered by Kodak, the first yacht will need to be in Hobart around 3.45am on Thursday. For 19 years, Mother Nature has jealously guarded the record time set by the American Maxi Kealoa in the Sydney Hobart race. And today, she intervened yet again. The anticipated gale force winds, which were expected to propel the lead yachts towards a new record, and a $100,000 bonus from race sponsors Kodak Gold, did not eventuate until late in the day. On the positions provided to race headquarters in Hobart, and considering the developing weather pattern, the record was safe. The race leader, the Maxi Catch Tasmania, early today ambled down the course at an average speed required to be the fastest yacht ever to cover the 630 nautical miles. But while late today she was still on target for the record, the light weather pattern that lay ahead looked set to cripple her challenge. The most remarkable effort came from the considerably smaller Exile, which at one stage last night actually assumed the lead in this, the 50th anniversary race. The latest report has her just astern of the most modern maxi racing, Brinda Bella, and maintaining a solid claim for top honours on handicap. Astern of her were Sorcery, Longabata Mitre 10, Epson Broomstick and Congeri. 
Handicap positions were uncertain, but among the smaller yachts doing well were Marara, the new Sloop Raptor, Exile, Rampant and Hearts Mineral Waters. A uh, southwesterly front hit the fleet at about 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, we on board Young Endeavour had winds of up to 48 knots, although some yachts did experience 60 knots. There's been sail damage to some yachts. Uh, crews have suffered minor cuts and bruises, and it was the boats towards the back of the fleet that had the worst of the conditions. Those in the lee of Flinders Island were a lot luckier. A couple of yachts have had scares with container vessels, but uh, all is OK. They've managed to change course and avoid them. Some yachts are seeking shelter from the storm and hope to continue in the race tomorrow. The yacht Macbeth has retired to Eden with a split mainsail and Kodak Express, which is heading for shelter at Cabo Island, is also okay. One yacht, Auspicious, which was returning to Eden after earlier problems, required assistance from the Coastal Patrol and they're now safely in Eden Harbour. It appears that there will be a few retired boats after this storm tonight. It's still blowing pretty hard and it's hard to know when it will abate. Day three and this was the race for line honours. Tasmania had made great speed under Spinnaker and led Brindabella and Exile by a comfortable margin. The bulk of the fleet was still in Bass Strait. The closing stages were as dramatic as any in the Classic. A savage change in wind direction the previous evening provided conditions which did not favour the two-masted Tasmania. The crew could only sail their hardest, watch and hope as George Snow's Sydney Maxi Brindabella began to close in like a line on the prowl. Also making a move was Warwick Miller's greenhold pocket Maxi Exile. In the dark hours, Tasmania and Brindabella locked into a head-to-head -head battle and at first light, much to everyone's surprise, the well-sailed Tasmania was maintaining the narrowest of leads. As the pair approached the entrance to the Derwent, they were just 200 metres apart. Then a smart tactical move aboard Tasmania and a sail problem on Brindabella combined to give the Hobart yacht the break it needed. And here it is, approaching the finish of the 50th anniversary Sydney Hobart race. And look at this, we still have a race on our hands. The big maxi catch Tasmania is well and truly into the river and in the distance there was Brindabella. You can see all the crew of Tasmania on deck there, all very anxious to keep the Sydney maxi Brindabella behind them. And now the way it's looking, Brindabella will literally have to jump over the top of them to beat them. That's the finishing line at the top of the screen and Tasmania is making superb speed up here. All sails set, looking very fast, very strong. The crew has put up a magnificent effort overnight to hold out Brindabella because in reality conditions for over the last 40 miles from Tasman Island across Storm Bay and up the Derwent River to the finishing line right at the foot of the city of Hobart has certainly favoured the Sydney boat. But great crew work, great tactics here and we see Tasmania coming in to become the first ever Tasmanian yacht to take line honours in a Sydney Hobart Classic. Only a matter of metres to go, the line just ahead of them. They'll probably push the boat up through the eye of the wind here and let the sails flap just to absolutely minimise their time taken for the course. Unfortunately though, they will be outside the course record. They are outside the course record by about two hours. So that record that stood from 1975 will last another year. And there it is, coming up through the eye of the wind now. They're almost across the line, just cruising through there. A great scene here, boats everywhere, hundreds of boats out on the river. It's just before 6am and there it is, Tasmania, the big maxi catch sailed by Bob Clifford is across the line. The crew starting to relax there, the congratulations will go around now as they start to get the boat ready for uh, dropping the sails. There you see them coming out of the cockpit there and here come the sails down now, up into the breeze once more. And it uh, looks like Graham Freeman going forward there, the sailing master, to congratulate everyone. Bob Clifford, the skipper, will be a very elated man coming into his hometown to a victory. The first ever Tasmanian yacht to take line on us. And now, just seven minutes away, behind uh, Tasmania is Brindabella. Very disappointing moment for them. She looked as though she could catch uh, the big Tasmanian boat and beat them across the line but that isn't going to be the, the uh, case this year. George Snow and the boys will have to come back and try once again. Moving very nicely through the water though. 
This upwind sailing really does suit Brinda Bella, but she couldn't capitalise on her gains made earlier today on Storm Bay. And there it is now, Brinda Bella just coming across the line, sun just coming up in Hobart, a big crowd out on the water and starting to gather on the shore to welcome these yachts into Hobart. City in the background now, and uh, all these spectator boats starting to move in around, and while Brinda Bella gets ready, here is Tasmania coming into the dock. A very tired crew, they've been up all night knowing that they had to fight very, very hard to keep Brinda Bella out of line on us in this race. The champagne's out already, Bob Clifford doing it all, spraying the crowd, a very happy man, and the party in Hobart today around this yacht and this crew is going to be something to remember. A big day for Hobart all round. Well, the, the two rigs is obviously the fastest way to Hobart, but it's, uh, it's only by that much. <laughs> With line honours decided and the partying underway, the smaller yachts were still racing for a win on handicap. And the overall race winner was the 41-foot German entry Raptor, sailed by Andreas Eichenauer, an Australian-designed and built boat launched just five days before the race. This had been the greatest gathering of ocean racing yachts the world had seen, with more than 300 reaching the finish. With that, the Kodak Gold 50th anniversary Sydney Hobart race was complete.